Today we are going to be discussing degrees and how they are related to fractional parts of a circle. So let's read here at the top where it says connect. You can use what you know about angles and fractional parts of a circle to understand angle measurement. Angles are measured in units called degrees. Think of a circle divided into 360 equal parts. An angle that turns through 1 360th of the circle measures 1 degree. Yesterday we discussed some of our measurements. We talked about how a circle is 360 degrees all the way around. Okay, so we're going to think of it as being divided into those 360 equal parts. The symbol that we use for degrees is that little circle that you put on top of wherever you're writing a number. So if for whatever reason you were using, let's say, 40, your degree symbol would go up on top. It should not be as large as your zero. Otherwise, what does this start to look like? 400. Okay, so make sure that if you're doing the degrees, it is smaller and is to the top of what you're doing. Okay, so take a look here at the one degree. That's all it's asking for there. Now here it says the angle between two spokes on a bicycle wheel turns through 10 360ths of a circle. What is the measure of the angle between the spokes? So let's get back into the highlighting that we have been doing. The question was asking us, what is the measure of the angle between the spokes? And what is the number or fraction we are going to be using? Cheyenne? 10 360ths. Seems like a lot, huh? But really it's not as much as you think it is. Look over here at the question on the side. It says, what part of an angle does a spoke represent? So think of a spoke on a bicycle and think of the angle that it makes. You can also see it in the picture there that they drew in that circle. You can use that circle as being the bicycle wheel, and that would be one spoke. What is the part of the angle? What does it represent? Think of all the things we've discussed. It wants to know what this one spoke would represent. What part of the angle? So right now you're looking at a specific angle. What part of it would this represent? Aiden? Well, you have a vertex, but I want you to tell me from the vertex on what it is. Ray. So it's a ray. So this is going to represent a ray. So we're going to say the ray that forms the side of the angle. We're only discussing a part of it, so it's only going to deal with the side. The ray that forms the side of an angle. So we're still going back and using some of the other vocabulary that we had in previous lessons. So it says each one 360th turn is going to measure how many degrees? What did it tell us above? One. It's going to measure one degree. If it's one 360th, that's one circle. It's only going to give us one degree out of that circle. So if the spoke is 10 360ths, what are we going to have? 10 degrees. Okay. So if I was to measure this angle right here that I have drawn, it would measure to be about 10 degrees. Okay? So the measure of the angle between the spokes is 10 degrees. And we're going to use that new symbol up here. So you're going to write 10 and then the little degree symbol. So look at the math top question. We did 1 degree. And we did 10 degrees, so it says, how many degrees is the measure of an angle that turns through one whole circle? Mackenzie, what would it be? 
It would be 360 degrees, or you could also have written it as 360 over 360, because we know then that that is one full circle, right? So you could write it in two or three different ways. 360 degrees, you could have written it 360, 360ths, yes? Because we know that one degree is one over 360, so if I wanted the whole entire circle, I would have to have all of it, 360. Does that make sense? You don't have to write that down there, that's just to show you what you would write if you were to answer that on your own. Okay? Turn the page, please. Example number two is going to find the measure of a right angle. So they drew a right angle in there. You see the right angle symbol that we discussed. Through what fraction of a circle does a right angle turn? What fraction? So think about that. If I have a right angle, how far did it turn? This is what you did yesterday. So how far would this particular angle turn? If I was to draw, and it even has your little arrows here, guys. How far is this from yesterday? What would my turn be here, Bailey? One fourth. It is turning a fourth of that circle. So that's the fraction that it has turned. So it says to write one fourth as an equivalent fraction with 360 in the denominator. So what is one fourth equal to in 360 degrees? Well, what is a right angle, guys? 90. So is that going to be here? Yes. Your right angle is always 90 degrees, so it will go over your 360. You need to be writing this. So then you need to think of also 4 times 9 is 36. So that means 4 times what will give you 360, Chase? The 90. To me, it was a lot easier to know what a right angle meant for that. But could I have done that with this information here? 4 times what number gives me 36? The 9 does, and I can add my 0 back to it to get 360. Okay, a couple of different ways to think about it. So now it says to write 90 360 is in actual degrees. So, when an angle that turns through one 360th is a circle, it measures what? It's turning one 360th, what we say it was? One degree. We've had it three times now. Over here, we talked about it at the beginning. We wrote it down here also, and now this is the third time we've seen it. One 360th is one degree. Okay? An angle that turns through 90. 360th of a circle would measure how many degrees? 90 degrees. Again, make sure that little degree symbol is smaller than your zero. So a right angle, as we know, measures what? 90 degrees. We've talked about this a lot already. So hopefully it will make it a little bit easier on you today. So that was how we find a right angle. The next one you're going to find is a straight angle. So let's think through this one. For what fraction of a circle does a straight angle turn? This is what we did yesterday again. So what's the fraction of the turn? Notice how far did that turn? Four. Yes, I was using Don Maurice. Thank you. Raise your hand please. Don Maurice, how far did this turn? One half. I have from here to here is all is halfway, so the whole top, yes? So that's your fraction. So you're putting it here. Did you notice it's going to ask for fraction and for degrees? So be prepared to do either one, depending on what it asks for. So now we have to write the half as an equivalent fraction with 360 in the denominator. Now, what do we know about straight angles? Do we know how many degrees a straight angle is already, or should we? Yes. Yeah, because we've talked about it already. And what is it? 180 degrees. So a half is the same thing as 180. Now, if you didn't know that or couldn't remember, could you use what they have written here? How many times does 2 get multiplied to get into 36? 18. So 2 times 18 would give you 36, and then I have to add my 0 back on. That's what they're doing right here. 
2 times 18 is 36, so 2 times 180 will give you the 360. So a couple different ways of thinking about this. So what is the straight angle measure? 180 degrees. It's not 100, folks. It's 100. It's a big habit that lots of us have. It's 100, not 100. Couple questions down here. How can you describe the measure of an acute angle in degrees? Think about what an acute angle means to you. How can we describe it in degrees? Well, then what can we say? Okay, so you could say more than zero degrees, but less than 90, because what's 90? All right, so we know that an acute angle is less than that, so we can say more than zero degrees, but less than 90 degrees. So you had to know what an acute angle was, something again that we've done previously. Okay, so if I can do that with an acute, how can you describe the measure of an obtuse angle in degrees? What do we know about obtuse angles? Morgan? Less than zero degrees, but more than 90 degrees. And, it, and I think it can be less than zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, think about what obtuse means to us. What is an obtuse angle to you? You don't have to use degrees necessarily to get there, so give me what an obtuse angle is to you. Okay, so bigger than a right angle. So what is a right angle? So it would be greater than 90, right? Yes, so let's start with that. Greater then 90 degrees. Okay, what well, would it be less than? Think of all the angles we've had. Anyone know what it's going to be less than? Yeah. Right, what's going to be less than? And less than 180, which would be your straight angle. So greater than 90 degrees and less than. 180. Don't forget the degree symbol on both of those, please. Everybody kind of understanding what we're looking at as far as degrees. When you turn the page, you're going to have some time to practice some of those.